While Stalin's mustache was good, the man was very bad. Born on December 18, 1878, in the small Georgian town of Gori, then part of the Russian Empire, his early life was marked by hardship and instability, shaping the man who would later become one of history's most infamous dictators. Stalin was the son of Bessarion Yugashvili, a cobbler, and Ketevan Galadze, a devoutly religious laundress. His family lived in poverty, and his father was an alcoholic who frequently abused Stalin and his mother. This tumultuous home environment left a lasting impression on young Joseph, instilling in him a sense of resilience and a deep-seated mistrust of others. Despite their financial struggles, Stalin's mother was determined to see her son educated. She managed to enroll him in the Gori Church School, where he excelled academically and earned a scholarship to the Tiflis Theological Seminary in Tbilisi. Initially, Stalin was a devout student, immersing himself in religious studies. However, his exposure to the harsh discipline and rigid dogma of the seminary led to a profound shift in his beliefs. While at the seminary, Stalin began reading forbidden literature, including works by Karl Marx and other revolutionary thinkers. This clandestine education ignited his interest in radical politics and set him on a path toward Marxism. In 1899, just before his final exams, Stalin was expelled from the seminary, officially for failing to pay his tuition, though it's widely believed his political activism played a significant role. Following his expulsion, Stalin fully embraced the revolutionary cause. He joined the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party in 1901 and quickly became involved in organizing strikes, spreading propaganda, and engaging in acts of civil disobedience. During these early years, Stalin honed his skills in underground activities, including bank robberies and extortion to fund the party's activities. His ruthless efficiency and unwavering commitment caught the attention of senior Bolshevik leaders, including Vladimir Lenin. Despite multiple arrests and periods of exile in Siberia, Stalin's resolve remained unshaken and his reputation within the Bolshevik faction grew. Stalin's steadfastness during these tumultuous times earned him a place among the trusted Bolshevik operatives. Despite multiple arrests and exiles to Siberia, he consistently managed to escape and return to his revolutionary activities, showcasing his resourcefulness and resilience. By 1917, Russia was ripe for revolution. The February Revolution led to the abdication of Tsar Nicholas II, and a provisional government was established. However, widespread discontent persisted. The Bolsheviks, under Lenin's leadership, saw an opportunity to seize power. Stalin, who had returned from Siberian exile, was appointed to the Bolshevik Central Committee. During the critical period leading up to the October Revolution, Stalin played a key role in the party's strategy and propaganda efforts. He worked closely with Lenin and other leaders to plan the overthrow of the provisional government. On October 25, 1917, the Bolsheviks launched a coup d'etat known as the October Revolution, successfully seizing control of Petrograd. This marked the beginning of Bolshevik rule in Russia and the establishment of a communist government. After the Bolsheviks emerged victorious from the Civil War in 1922, Lenin recognized the need to solidify the party's control over the newly formed Soviet Union. Stalin's administrative abilities and loyalty earned him the position of General Secretary of the Communist Party, a role that, at the time, seemed largely bureaucratic. However, Stalin adeptly used this position to build a network of loyal supporters within the party, appointing allies to key positions and amassing considerable power behind the scenes. In 1922, Lenin suffered a stroke, which significantly weakened his ability to lead. During Lenin's illness, Stalin took on more responsibilities and began to consolidate his power further. Lenin grew increasingly wary of Stalin's growing influence and dictatorial tendencies, expressing his concerns in a document known as Lenin's Testament, where he suggested that Stalin should be removed from his position as general secretary. However, Lenin's death in 1924 
prevented these recommendations from being acted upon decisively. Following Lenin's death, a power struggle ensued among the top Bolshevik leaders. Stalin outmaneuvered his rivals, including Leon Trotsky, who was considered Lenin's likely successor. By forming strategic alliances and exploiting divisions among his opponents, Stalin gradually marginalized Trotsky and other potential threats. Once in control, Stalin moved to centralize authority and implement his vision for the Soviet Union. He launched the first five-year plan in 1928, aiming to rapidly industrialize the economy and collectivize agriculture. These policies were intended to transform the Soviet Union from a predominantly agrarian society into a major industrial power. The five-year plans focused on expanding heavy industries such as steel, coal, and machinery. While industrial output did increase significantly, the rapid pace and harsh methods led to widespread inefficiencies and human suffering. Workers faced brutal working conditions, and any resistance was met with severe punishment. Stalin's collectivization policy sought to consolidate individual peasant farms into large, state-controlled enterprises. This policy was met with resistance from many peasants, leading to widespread chaos in the countryside. The government responded with brutal repression, including mass deportations and executions. One of the most tragic outcomes of collectivization was the Great Famine of 1932 to 1933, particularly severe in Ukraine, where it is known as the Holodomor. Millions of people died from starvation as grain was forcibly requisitioned and exported, even as food shortages ravaged the population. The famine remains one of the darkest chapters of Stalin's rule. Stalin's paranoia and desire to eliminate any potential threats to his power culminated in the Great Purge of the late 1930s. This campaign of political repression saw widespread arrests, forced confessions, and executions of party members, military leaders, and ordinary citizens accused of being enemies of the people. The purges decimated the Red Army's leadership, leading to severe consequences during the early stages of World War II. Millions were imprisoned in the Gulag labor camps, where many perished due to harsh conditions. Throughout his rule, Stalin cultivated a cult of personality, portraying himself as the wise and benevolent leader of the Soviet people. Propaganda glorified his achievements and depicted him as a near-mythical figure who was infallible and indispensable to the nation's success. State-controlled media, literature, and arts were all harnessed to promote Stalin's image, while dissenting voices were ruthlessly silenced. The rewriting of history and the suppression of alternative narratives ensured that Stalin's version of events dominated public consciousness. His personal life was also very strange. His paranoia was a defining feature of his character. He trusted very few people and was constantly on the lookout for potential threats to his power. This distrust extended to his closest associates, many of whom fell victim to his purges. His manipulative nature allowed him to play different factions against each other, securing his position at the top of the Soviet hierarchy. He was married twice, and both marriages ended in sorrow. His first wife, Ekaterina Svanidze, died of typhus in 1907, leaving Stalin devastated. His second wife, Nadezhda Aliluyeva, committed suicide in 1932, reportedly after a heated argument with Stalin. Her death had a profound impact on him, though he rarely showed his grief publicly. Stalin had three children, Yakov from his first marriage and Vasily and Svetlana from his second. His relationship with his children was strained and complex. Yakov, who had a troubled relationship with his father, attempted suicide and was later captured by the Germans during World War II. Stalin refused to negotiate for his release, and Yakov died in captivity. Vasily struggled with alcoholism and lived a reckless life, often clashing with his father's strict expectations. 
Svetlana, Stalin's only daughter, had a closer relationship with him, but defected to the United States in 1967, repudiating her father's legacy. Stalin led a relatively austere lifestyle, especially compared to other dictators. He lived in a modest Dhaka outside Moscow, where he enjoyed simple pleasures such as gardening, reading, and watching movies. He was an avid reader with a personal library of thousands of books, covering a wide range of topics from Marxist theory to classical literature. Stalin's dining habits were well known. He often hosted late-night dinner parties where guests, usually high-ranking officials, were expected to drink heavily and engage in political discussions. These gatherings could be convivial, but also had an undercurrent of tension, as Stalin would sometimes use these occasions to gauge loyalty or humiliate his subordinates. Stalin's health began to deteriorate in the late 1940s. He suffered from arteriosclerosis and other ailments, likely exacerbated by his heavy smoking and stressful lifestyle. Despite his declining health, Stalin remained in power until his death. In 1953, Stalin suffered a stroke and was found unconscious in his dacha. Due to his paranoia and the fear he instilled in those around him, there was a significant delay in providing medical assistance. He died on March 5th, 1953. His death marked the end of an era, and the subsequent power struggle within the Soviet leadership led to significant changes in the country's political landscape. Jenkuya. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell, or Stalin will impose bad economic policies on your household, resulting in widespread famine and hardship.